First on the developments of the day, Karnataka Chief Minister Siddharamaya and his Home Minister KJ George met the Karnataka Governor at Rajbhavan to brief him on why the Karnataka Cabinet decided not to hand over the case to the CBI despite immense pressure mounted by the opposition in Karnataka. And this is what Siddharamaya told headlines today after the meeting. <laughs> Ravi incident by Yen and Agi, you were again explained by the next time. Killed the road now, you're the next Kelly the rare. Our explained by the US. Hurricane Adita is there, CID put it away. Hurricane Adita is there. I do not know all those things. What I'm, what I'm telling is when the nearly 95 percent people of Karnataka, when they demand the CBI probe, it is the responsibility of the chief minister. He can't be so much adamant. He, he should see that, yes, the request of the people at large need to be considered. There may be certain uh, um, things which, uh, which may harm to his party or to his um, ministers or to his MLS. But the uh, justice should be given to the people of the Karnataka. Right, uh, so the Congress not willing to give over the, give over the case to the CBI and the BJP and the Dantadal Secular in Bangalore keeping up the pressure. Meanwhile, family members staged a dharna at Freedom Park in Bangalore to reiterate the same demand that the case should be handed over to the CBI. <laughs> Right, so that was Gaurama, DK Ravi's mother at Freedom Park in Bangalore. In fact, our phone lines are open and you can call in to share your views on whether you think Siddharamaya, the Chief Minister of Karnataka, has handled or mishandled this particular case of DK Ravi in Bangalore. Our first caller is Chandrasekhar from Hyderabad. Mr. Chandrasekhar, what do you have to say? Uh, Sudhir, this is, uh, before I go to the debate, I, I, we have our full sympathies to Mr. Ravi. I, myself being a whistleblower and anti-corruption activist and also anti-land grab activist, right. I know what would be the family going through. And I think why the government yes. is uh, shying away to go and give this case to CBI unless and until there is some reasons and they have a fear that some Congress people might have been involved in this and it may get exposed. Anyway, it's, there is a nips and birds. At the same time, why the CM is uh, not willing to come forward. Incidentally, I just hear and the Harsal is saying that it should be handed over to CBI. Why not? Why not? Why yes. the government is so much worried about uh, a, a dynamic officer like this dying in a very suspicious circumstance, right. not getting on to uh, probe with uh, full details and uh, comfort? Absolutely, Mr. Chandrasekhar. Thanks a lot for calling in from Hyderabad. We also have Rohini Swami, my colleague, joining me from Bengaluru. Rohini, uh, now Sonia Gandhi, who met some of the MPs from Karnataka, the Congress MPs, is believed to have said that even she is not against handing over the case to the CBI. Uh, in fact, uh, we had reported last night that the Karnataka cabinet itself is completely divided over the issue of handing over the case to the CBI. In fact, on our screen, you can see the ministers who are against the CBI probe and there are other ministers in the Sidharama cabinet who do not mind the CBI probe because they do believe that the public perception of the Karnataka government is actually going down because people believe that there is something to hide as far as the Congress government is concerned, which is why they are so adamantly opposing the institution of a CBI probe into this entire case. Now, what's the information that you have as far as what Sonia Gandhi has said and whether that will actually change the mind of the Karnataka Chief Minister? Well, when I did speak to one of the MPs who was part of the delegation who met uh, Sonia Gandhi, he said that they did... Uh, they did ask the Karnataka Chief Minister and also talk to uh, Sonia Gandhi, asking uh, her to speak to the Karnataka Chief Minister to request him to hand it over, especially the probe of DK Ravi, to the CBI. Now, what I'm given to understand is, after I spoke to the Chief Minister also, that he did speak to Sonia Gandhi and explained it to her very clearly that at this point of time, he would still like to continue with the CID investigating the case because one is also the trust factor in, in, the, in the police force. The second also, uh, in, right. in terms of they have enough evidence in, in terms of the investigation already in place. But he's also, she's also uh, spoken to him and told him that people's sentiments, which are also important 
they should take that into consideration and the fact that there are so much of voices and a pro that is coming from the state of Karnataka seeking for CBI probe to which what I have given to understand right. is from my sources is that uh, the chief minister has told Sonia Gandhi that he would like to table the preliminary report in the house first on Monday after which if it is not for, they, they don't find it satisfying then they can hand it over to the CBI. Okay, that in fact word Rohini satisfactory is a very strange word that Congress leaders have been using because obviously the question that arises is satisfactory to who? We have our next caller on the phone line, Kavita, who is joining us from Bengaluru. Kavita, please go ahead. Yeah, I think uh, the message is very clear for the government, as uh, Mr. Santosh Shekde has told. It's a matter of pride for the government to put the, uh, transfer the case to the CBA so that they can make their stand clear. If there is nothing to hide, it's better to hand over the case to CBI. Right. Uh, Kavita, thanks a lot for joining us. Our next caller is Mr. Bishwanath, who is joining us from Bangalore. Please go ahead, sir. <coughs> the different position of the chief minister and some of the cabinet ministers indicate that uh, there is some foul play in the investigation. They are, high, they are uh, trying to hide with the prote and protect the interest of some vested interest in order to get a clear image and retain the, uh, the, the government's image. They should uh, respectfully hand over to the CBI for the investigation. Right, uh, Mr. Vishwana, thanks a lot for joining us on Absat Rohini. Now, what is the line of investigation that is being pursued? Because the opposition is also criticizing the Karnataka government and the CM in particular for actually taking the investigation line towards some personal reasons. Now, what is the CID? What are the sources in the CID telling you? Because if the preliminary report is to be tabled in the Karnataka Assembly by Monday, they should have done most of the work by now. Well, that is what I'm given to understand that the CID is investigating into multiple angles. But yes, uh, they are like we have also seen how it has been said even this in the floor of the assembly and the police continue to say off the record that it is because of personal reasons that drove him to uh, to DK Ravi, that drove DK Ravi through his death. But at the same time, they're also finding out those very, that they're also questioning and taking statements of certain people who are involved calls that have been made by DK Ravi just before he uh, he died. There are a number of calls that have, the call records have been pulled out, and especially to certain people. Those people also have been questioned. Their statements have been recorded. But yes, the, the state government is treading very carefully. The police is treading carefully because they're saying as of now, largely looks like uh, to be due to personal reasons. Though the opposition has said that the state government has vested interest because they're trying to save certain ministers because it is possibly the land mafia and the mafia, real estate mafia who could have driven right. him to his death. Uh, but at the same time, at this point of time, the police officials maintain to say that largely as part of the investigations, it turns out it looks to be largely because of personal reasons. Right. Uh, so that's the line of investigation that is being pursued by the Karnataka CID at the moment. But make no mistake about it. Here was an honest and upright officer who had made a name for himself by taking on the sand mining mafia in Kolar and also the real estate lobby during his stint since November in Bengaluru. And then he's, get, he's found dead in extremely mysterious circumstances. Obviously, the CID has its work cut out, especially by the manner in which the Karnataka government seems to have blundered in the manner in which it has handled this entire case, shifting out the IG of CID just a day after the case was handed over to the CID. We have our next caller, Usha, who is calling in from Bengaluru. Usha, please go ahead. Yes, good evening. You know, the Karnataka CM has uh, mishandled DK Ravi's case completely. And here in Karnataka, there is a strong suspicion that he has done it deliberately to protect the interests of some of his ministers, you know. In fact, it has been a series of bunglings by the government right from the time of the unfortunate death of DK Ravi. Both the police commissioner and the government, even before any investigations for Ravi's death had begun, dubbed it as a case of suicide. Right. Then there was an attempt at you right. know, giving a personal angle to Ravi's death. And efforts were made at character assassination of Ravi. And then the IGP, Mr. Pranab right. was transferred in his once the government decided to hand over the case to CID. And within 24 hours, he was reinstated, you know. And the biggest bungling was the yes. government's refusal to hand over the case to the CPI, despite pressure from all the quarters. And if after all, this gone, the, the government relents and hands it over to the CPI. Right, now. Usha. Yeah. Hmm. Right, Usha. Thanks a lot for your points. Obviously, the Karnataka government not covering itself with glory. We have our next caller calling me in from Bahrain, Mr. Nagesh. Please go ahead. Sir, uh, good evening, sir. Uh, see, because I was just watching your channel. I think it is an excellent program. Uh, I think for me, looking from a Thank distance, you. it looks like it is a clear 
strategy of the government to delay this uh, CBI handing over and all those things because they are quite sure that this has to be handed over to CBI. So what they are doing is they are trying to take time to destroy these evidences as much as possible. It is a clear case of a strategy by the Chief Minister and his cabinet to, it's a, it's a, it's a tactical move to get the time as much as possible to demolish all the evidences. This is what is right, uh, looks like. Right, Mr. Nagesh, thanks a lot for calling in from Bahrain on Up South. In fact, as we reported, the Congress in Karnataka is completely divided on the issue whether the case should have been handed over to the CBI or not and the fact the cabinet yesterday took a long time to actually come to the conclusion that the case will remain with the CID but of course now that Sonia Gandhi has said that the case should be handed over to the CBI we will see on Monday whether the chief minister takes a U-turn on the decision. Let's listen to some of the voices, some of the political voices that are coming in from Karnataka. We submitted a memorandum to the Honorable Governor, regarding this uh, suspected death of D.K. Ravi, honest and efficient officer, his death become a suspicious and for that purpose we insist for the CBI inquiry and uh, two days we all stalled the entire proceedings of the assembly and council but uh, chief minister and government is adamant, is not at all giving CBI inquiry. And, see, uh, and so wh why do you want to undermine everything that if the, and the Chief Minister of Karnataka is saying he comes comes over, meets the parents, he says you don't worry, I will see to it that the probe is done well. When we are all committing ourselves so strongly, I think people should give us a chance and we have decided very firmly that we are going to stick to a CID investigation and uh, we have got the best officer who is, uh, who is looking after the investigation, who is, uh, who's got, uh, he's, he's been well acclaimed. So it's not that uh, uh, there is any political interference in it, and uh, what is ultimately the matter, what ultimately counts is is that the truth comes out. That's what matters, and um, uh, that I think hopefully will happen. Story which they are creating, anybody can guess that this government will not going to bring any truth. What are all the background in this? Uh, Ravi suicide incident. For that reason only, we are demanding CBI inquiry. Right. Uh, our next caller on Up South is Pradeep, who is calling in from Bengaluru. Pradeep, uh, what do you have to say? Okay. Our next caller is Arjun, who is calling in from Bengaluru. Please go ahead, sir. Oh, sir. Actually. Uh, what the problem is, uh, is really our Karnataka people are facing is with Chief Minister of Karnataka itself. Okay, he don't know, okay. he will just sleep, he know how to sleep, how to eat, only these things he know better than giving a good administ uh, administration to the people of Karnataka. On Up South, we are asking if Karnataka Chief Minister Siddharamaya has blundered his way through the handling of the DK Ravi case in Karnataka. And in fact, I can now go across to Pratibha Raman, uh, who joins me from Bengaluru. Pratibha, I was reading a tweet by Madhva Narayan, who is a journalist, and he said Karnataka government's behavior on DK Ravi shows a sharp disconnect with the current reality of democratic India. The response is so 1970s. Is that the sense you get when you're talking to people on the ground that people are not very happy with the way the Karnataka government has handled this case and they feel that the chief minister and his council of ministers have something to hide? Well, right from the start, Sudhir, the conduct as well as the actions of the Karnataka government has not really been welcoming for the public because there is, uh, that has raised a lot of suspicion among the public because they feel, number one, that the Karnataka government is hiding something. Number two, shielding some persons who they think could be directly involved in this particular case. And various perceptions doing the rounds, be it threats or be it pressure that has been exerted on uh, the IAS officers, uh, officer while exploring different uh, other cases uh, in the different areas. Uh, None of these angles that are being explored and right from the start the Karnataka government has set the tone for this case calling it a suicide even right. before the investigation has started and now despite protests and despite uh, the public rage the fact that the CM has been adamant in not handing this case over to the CBI has only strengthened their suspicion. Right. Sudhi. 
right? Absolutely, Sidharamaya seems to have lost the perception battle as far as this high-profile case is concerned. In fact, Pratibha, thanks a lot for joining us. Our next caller is Nishant, who is joining us from Mumbai. Nishant, please go ahead. Uh, good evening, Sudhi, sir. I just wanted to make two quick points. One, I am a lawyer myself, yes. and we have under the profession that we cannot be an interested party if we are arguing a case. Now, this CID is under right. the Home Minister. If the Home Minister yes. himself is being questioned, because uh, one of the construction companies in which the questions are being raised, I believe he was said to have been some partnership or something. So he's an interested party, and CID is under him only. So since CID right. is under him, he's an interested party, either the two things have to happen. Either he has to resign, or the probe has to be given to CBI, because otherwise a free and fair probe is not possible. Secondly, right. if the government states that the CID probe is enough, Tomorrow, if Mrs. Sonia Gandhi, who is now thinking of giving it to CBI, if she says to Mr. Ramayana that she has to give it to CBI, okay. and she decides to give it right. to CBI, what will, be, what will be the points on which he decides to change the stance? If he decides to change the stance okay. on Mrs. Sonia Gandhi's instance, then what is the voice of the public of Karnataka? Is he valuing only Sonia Gandhi's okay, comments? Okay, fine. Nishant, Nishant, we are running out, running out of time. Our last caller on UpSouth is Girija, who is joining us from Chennai. Girija, 20 seconds, please go ahead. Uh, I just would like to know why the CM cannot be overtaken and the uh, parents can apply to Supreme Court immediately because uh, till Monday he will be going on filing all the evidences and then what is the point in uh, CBI doing anything in that case? 